the blessed fruit of your womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray, O God, whose only begotten Son, by his life, death, and resurrection, has purchased for us the rewards of eternal life. Grant, we beseech thee, that by meditating upon these mysteries of the most holy rosary of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we may imitate what they contain and obtain what they promise through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. For the intentions and protection of our Holy Father, Pope Francis. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us Glory be to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Immaculate heart of Mary, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Our guardian angels and patron saints, pray for us. May the divine assistance remain always with us, and may the souls of the faithfully departed through the mercy and goodness of God, rest in peace. Amen. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do that, O Prince of Heavenly Host. By the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Good evening. Welcome to St. Michael's Catholic Church. A special welcome to all our visitors. Today we celebrate the third Sunday of Easter. At this time, please check that your cell phone and all electronic devices are set to silence. Our celebrant today is Father Brennan. Our scripture reading can be found on page 111 of the Missalette. A notice to our visitors. Since our parish is so small, and the church has no side aisles, we begin Holy Communion from the back, Blessed, Blessed Virgin Mary side. The ushers will guide you. We now maintain silence as we prepare ourselves spiritually for the Holy Mass.
Good evening, everyone. Welcome to St. Michael's. Our opening song tonight is Open the Eyes of My Heart. Music can be found on sheets of paper in the pews. Please stand, everyone. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. With we welcome you all to St. Michael's Church, our visitors, as well as our parishioners, the third Sunday of Easter, the third week now, we continue to celebrate that Christ has risen from the dead, and he is the cause of our joy and the cause of our faith and trust in him. So let us bow our heads as we remember our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate these most sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done, what I have failed to do through my fault through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. 
Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The words for the glory are on page 10 of the Missalette. Let us pray. May your people exult forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. 
you denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. From the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in breaking of the bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish, he took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, "There, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of this past week was our annual clergy conference where all the priests are together with the bishop, and this it, it goes from place to place, but this year it was in Statesboro, and uh, one of the big jokes about the, uh, the clergy conference is that sometimes the bishop walks up to a priest and taps him on the shoulder and says, let's you and I take the Emmaus walk. 
And the Emmaus walk means that you're about to be told you're going to be changed to a new assignment, which happens in May. So, of course, the big joke is who's taking the Emmaus walk? Well, I did not get invited on an Emmaus walk. So I think you're stuck with me probably for one more year. Saturday, April the 25th, or April 25th, is the Feast of St. Mark. It's your Catholic trivia for the day. The symbol of St. Mark, the evangelist, is the winged lion in church art and architecture. You'll sometimes see both the four evangelists, and St. Mark is always a lion. And lion is a symbol of courage and kingship, Christ our King. And lions, apparently, I can't verify this, but according to legend, lions sleep with their eyes open. So the lion became a symbol of Jesus Christ in the tomb, sleeping, but soon to rise from the dead. And now you know why in the famous book, children's book by C.S. Lewis, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, Aslan, Jesus Christ, is portrayed as the great lion who never sleeps. And there's a great uh, dialogue in, in that book when the children are talking to the, uh, Mr. and Miss Beaver about meeting uh, Aslan, and they say, is he, is he a man? And Mr. Beaver says, oh no, he's much more than a man. And one of the children said, is he safe? And he said, heavens, no, he's not safe. But he makes us safe. Aslan is not a tamed lion. And then Peter says, I'm longing to see him even if I do feel frightened when it comes to the point. Christ is infinite in power. And this is a little frightening, but he's our Savior. And once we belong to him, we can rest because he never sleeps. And there's no snatching out of his hand. Today is the gospel uh, talking about the road to Emmaus um, this past week. This famous gospel where Two disciples on Easter Sunday afternoon were walking seven miles to this town called Emmaus. And we know what the name of one of the disciples is, but we don't know the other. It simply says two disciples. And what we believe is that these were not any one of the 11 disciples remaining, right? And they were, Jesus begins to walk along with them and they have a conversation. But of course, they don't recognize him which is kind of hard for us to believe, isn't it? Was Jesus in disguise? I mean, he was risen from the dead. How can these two disciples who've been following Christ all this time, and they're walking with him and having a conversation, and they don't recognize him? And maybe the answer is they don't know him quite as well as they thought. Or maybe the answer is he prevents them from recognizing him. Why does he hide or disguise why does C.S. Lewis disguise Jesus as a lion? We've been walking and talking with Jesus for years and years, haven't we? And yet, we have to remember that there are things about the Lord that are so profound and so powerful, we have no idea, really, who we're dealing with. So, Luke, St. Luke describes something else going on in these disciples. He says that their hearts were burning as who they found out Jesus was talking with them. Here's your riddle for the day. There are two things described in the Bible that burn but are never consumed. What are those two things? Number one, the burning bush, right? When um, Moses goes over and says, what is this thing that continues to burn but doesn't? And the other is the human heart. They burn for God, for truth, for love, but they're never consumed. And our human heart is made for truth and love. And understanding that, opening the eyes of our heart, our opening song, is something that has to happen, isn't it? That our hearts, the Bible says, have to be circumcised, a surgical procedure. They have to be opened so that we can see God as he really is. St. Augustine's famous quote, You have made us for yourself, O Lord, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. St. Augustine puts it like this, the search for God 
has the function of transforming our minds, which in turn transforms our hearts. I want to say that again. The search for God has the function of transforming our minds, which in turn transforms our hearts. God wants us to search for him, but he can't make it too easy. To find the pearl of great price requires an immense effort. As Pope Francis puts it, some treasures of God will only be found by those who are really willing to dig. In the end, we appreciate Jesus Christ all the more because we had to search for him and suffer for him. And often our suffering is what opened the eyes of our hearts, wasn't it? Often that's what brings us to the Lord. We never stay the same when we suffer. When you suffer, you'll end by being closer to God or farther from God, but you will not stay the same. Suffering always does something and changes our hearts. It's interesting that, um, that we're trying to open the, uh, our eyes, and Jesus recommends heart surgery for that, doesn't he? Can you imagine going to your, your op- uh, ophthalmologist, and, and he says he recommends heart surgery to fix the cataracts on your eyes? The resurrection of Jesus and all the post-resurrection appearances, they're people who do not recognize Jesus standing right in front of them. Mary Magdalene, right? She thought it was the the gardener, remember? So there are many many instances in these post-resurrection appearances of not being able to see the resurrected Jesus. I know sometimes it's easy to see God and, you know, in the beautiful sunrise over the ocean or, or to see the Lord present in the Eucharist. We have faith in the Eucharist. But it's harder to see him present in the poor or someone who's maybe using us for some reason or another. The cure for spiritual myopia is always purity of heart. The only beatitude that promises that we will see God face to face. Blessed are the pure of heart. They shall see God. I remind you that in our Mass, there are two parts that I think we can argue come from the Emmaus experience. In every single Mass, what are the two parts? Liturgy of the Word, open their heart to the understanding of the Scriptures, right? And the Liturgy of the Eucharist, when he broke the bread, their eyes were opened, they saw it was Jesus, and he disappeared. And every Mass since has those two parts and always will until Jesus comes again. What are we learning here? That the Liturgy of the Word And the Eucharist is what enables us to open our hearts to see him, understand him, and to become one with him. You know, Bishop Barron reminds us that in all the fathers of the church saw great parallels between this road to Emmaus where the two disciples and Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. How do we know that? Well, they would say Adam and Eve ate the forbidden fruit and their eyes were opened to sin and death. The disciples ate the Eucharist on the road to Emmaus and their eyes were opened to see Jesus risen from the dead, the Savior. Another parallel, Adam and Eve hid themselves from God because they were ashamed after original sin. They could see their sin. Jesus hid himself walking with these two disciples in their shame to restore their original innocence. Adam and Eve walked out of the Garden of Eden together and the two disciples on the road. One was named Cleopas, we know his name, and the other is not named. And St. Augustine believed that this was man and wife walking together. The Gospel of John tells us that one of the holy women who stood beneath the cross was Mary, wife of Cleopas. She was a disciple of Jesus. And so many of the, the fathers of the church believe it was Cleopas and his wife going to Emmaus. And then once they realized that uh, that it was Jesus who was talking to them, what did they do? They walked seven miles straight back to Jerusalem. In other words, we're going the wrong way. The great miracle of salvation happened in Jerusalem, and we got to get back there and be with his disciples and learn what the Lord is saying to us. And finally, God comes to the Garden of Eden to seek out Adam and Eve when they were hiding after original sin. And Jesus comes to seek us out to elicit our faith in his resurrection. Christianity is the only religion where God comes looking for us. Isn't that wonderful? And of course, the Garden of Eden, the trouble began with bad eating, didn't it? 
eating of fruit. And of course, our salvation ends with good eating, eating the Eucharist and becoming one with the Lord. So we ask the Lord today, forgive us the courage of a lion. You know, it's not easy to be Christian today, is it? It's harder and harder, post-Christian world. And our faith needs to be stronger and stronger. And trusting in Jesus and having that personal friendship. Just knowledge of him is not the same thing as faith, is it? St. John Cardinal Newman says, we are not saved by theology, we're saved by faith. And that means we have to have a relationship with the living Jesus. We have to see him, talk to him, listen to him, love him. And then we will never walk away from him. So I close with the words of those two disciples to Jesus. Their hearts were burning, but they did not know why. And they said, stay with us, Lord, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. They invited Jesus to come in. And I know we've been Catholic, many of us, a long time, all our life. But we need to invite Jesus to come in again and again. Invite Jesus to come in again. The greatest treasures will only be found by those who are willing to dig. Amen. Please stand. Our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, not made consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. This Easter season, we lift up our prayers with confidence in the power of the risen Lord Jesus. For God's people throughout the world, that our hearts may burn for the truth manifested by the resurrection of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and for Bishop Stephen Parks, our bishop, for all our pastors and priests throughout the world, that they will have the wisdom, courage, and goodness to lead the world to Christ, the light of the world. <clears throat> we pray to the Lord. Lord. For peace throughout the world, for an end to violence, war, injustice, and revenge. We pray that the peace of Christ will reign in every human heart. We pray to the Lord. Lord. For our home here on Tybee Island, for the aversion of hurricanes and all disasters from our shores, <coughs> we pray to the Lord. Lord. For vocations, we pray. O oh God, hear, hear our, our prayer, prayer and let our cry come unto you. Bless our diocese of Savannah with many vocations to the priesthood, diaconate, and religious life. Give the men and women you call the light to understand your gift. 
love to follow always in the footsteps of your priestly son. For a renewed belief in and a renewed love and devotion for the real presence of Jesus <coughs> in the Holy Eucharist, the great gift which makes us one body in Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord God, your Son vanquished death forever by his resurrection. We lift our prayers to you and we bow our heads before the holy name of Jesus, for he is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Offertory song is I Has Not Seen, number 728. Number Wash me, Lord, from my iniquities. Cleanse me from all my sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray these offerings of your exultant church. You have given her cause for such great gladness. Grant also the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Up Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times, but above all in this time to lodge you more gloriously 
when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open. For death is our ran- his death is our ransom from death, and his rising is the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as we acclaim. are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. (laughs) The mystery of faith. For as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Stephen, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. All who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, 
that with the blessed Virgin Mary, mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. So we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my room, but only say the word, my soul shall be.
communion song is Taste and See, number 930. 930.
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. It's a reminder that this week I will be uh, in, up in Gaylord, Michigan, giving a retreat. And so I will fly out early in the morning. We'll have no weekday daily Masses this coming week. On Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday, there will be a communion service, Monday morning at 8, Wednesday evening at 6, and Thursday at 8. There'll be nothing on Tuesday. So um, there'll be no Masses this week while I'm away, just not able to always find a priest to cover. And uh, this was one of those weeks that we were unable. Also, there is Mass, of course, at St. Peter's on Wilmington Island, for those that want to go to Mass. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Our closing song is Come On and Bless the Lord with Me. Hallelujah. Come on and bless.